Well, good morning. My name is Gordon Hickson, and uh, I'm sure you've been following us with the Holy Spirit over the last few weeks. But today we're really privileged to have a brand new believer with us called Rachel. And <laughs> she has been asking a lot of pastoral questions. So this morning, we're going to focus on some of the subjects that people so often ask. How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? And Rachel's going to be asking me some questions. So Rachel, how can I help you today? Well, I go to church and I hear them talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And um, sometimes when they're worshipping, I hear them like in other languages. And I, oh, it's, but, but I know they speak English. And then I hear people talking about speaking in tongues. And um, so I thought I'd come and ask you some questions because it seems that there is more, but I'm not quite sure what to do. So tongues is a really special, intimate language. And when we uh, receive the Spirit and are baptised in the Holy Spirit, something very special begins to happen. We feel the Spirit flowing into us and through us. And you can today be baptised in the Holy Spirit. I can pray with you to be filled with the Spirit, baptised in the Holy Spirit, and also begin to start praying in that strange language, which we call tongues. But, but when I became Christian, didn't the Holy Spirit come in me already? Yes, he did. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside you. But as you've probably been listening to uh, in all the talks we've done, you probably realise that the Holy Spirit not only comes into you when you come to Christ, but also he comes to fill you and overflow from you. And later he comes upon you for ministry. So it's lots of different ways, but it's all the same Holy Spirit. So do you need to specifically ask for the Holy Spirit then to be baptised? Yes, you ask okay. and he comes. I remember what I shared about from Luke, Luke 11, how much more is the Heavenly Father willing to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Okay. He's a good father. He's a good father. And he so longs to, to come to you today. So shall we go for it? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you just close your eyes and I'm just going to gently lay hands on your head. Now we don't need to do that. There's nothing special in it. But in the Bible and also historically, people have laid hands on people as an impartation of the Holy Spirit. So I just want you to focus on Jesus right now, and I'm just gonna lay hands on your head, and I just want you just to breathe in, just let the Spirit of God fill you. Remember Jesus said, come to me and drink. Come all you who are thirsty and drink. So out of your innermost being, rivers of living water will flow. So just drink deeply, breathe in deeply. You feel his presence pouring into you right now. Just receive. Can you feel something beginning to stir inside you? Yeah, I just feel peace. Beautiful. Now just open your eyes. Now, when you feel that, that the Holy Spirit is beginning to pour into you, but there's this gift of tongues, which is as you breathe in and then you breathe out, you can actually begin to speak. You can choose to speak in tongues, which is, is that gift of speaking out those intimate languages of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes they call it angelic languages. But we don't always know what it means. But uh, today I want you to be able to just flow in that language. So would you like that? Yeah. Well, the good thing about you is that you're hungry. And the Bible always says that the hungry get filled. And you've been so hungry to know. So I just know that this will just come, the Spirit of God will fill you and he'll flow through from you. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes and just relax. And just let the Spirit of God fill you again. Just breathe in the Spirit of God. And I'm going to count to three. And then when I count to three, I want you not to speak in English, but just open your mouth. And as I do, just begin to speak out in those words that come to you. They don't come from your mind, they'll come from deep inside. So take a deep breath. And then one, two, three. Broshabra ilo kare nispa na vivo shabri usoporoda vasabiyanda. La garas tobri nobri nibra vasakara. La broshabra. Just keep on speaking it to him. He loves you. And then just stop. See, you can completely control it. You can start it. You can stop it. 
but your tongue sounded very different from my tongue so why is that every tongue sounds different and uh, sometimes even the tongue that you have will change sometimes i find that my tongue would sound more chinese or more russian -y or uh, so mm -hmm. you never you never know why it changes but everybody has a different tongue it's it's a whole variety of different expressions of, the, of your spirit but it also sounds very sort of stilted, just a few little words. So, so what do you do about that? Because yours sounds very sort of more fluent. Well, sometimes when people speak in tongues, they speak instantly, very fluently. But most of the time, people speak very, I mean, like a, like a baby. A baby okay. doesn't speak straight away in absolutely fluent language. It begins to, the Bible talks about stammering tongues. And as we begin to let it flow and we relax, more and more of that language begins to flow. And I've always told people, find a really quiet space where you're by yourself, either uh, in a wood, by the river, in the bath, and just allow the Spirit of God to come on you, and then just begin to start practicing. And you'll find that it becomes part of your daytime, it becomes part of your life. You just find yourself all the time uh, speaking in tongues. Not so should you do it every, all the time then? Not all the time, but I, I often just find myself flipping into tongues, when I'm driving or when I'm just walking, I just find it's even inaudibly, it's just deep down, there's a, the Spirit of God is just bubbling inside. And I know that that, you remember that thing I shared from Jude? It said, mm -hmm. build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. And so you, as you do that, your whole spiritual uh, battery is being charged mm -hmm. and it just pours into you. Mm -hmm. So was that good? Yeah. But it's like in your head, you're supposed to be thinking, is it real? Of course. We remember what it says in Luke 11. Mm. If you ask your father for a, uh, for bread, will he give you a stone? If you ask your father, a, a normal father, for mm. a fish, will he give you a serpent? How much more will your heavenly father mm. give the Holy Spirit? So what you ask him for, he will give you. And you'll find as you practice, there'll be a greater level of intimacy in your life. You'll just find something really extraordinary being built up inside you. Now you can go beyond that and begin to sing in the Spirit. Now, I know you love music mm -hmm. so I think you'll probably find like I do that singing in the Spirit is far more what I do all the time just allowing that Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that and okay. don't, don't be worried about it. I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes again and I'm going to begin to sing in the Spirit and I just want you to uh, just choose to just start, just open your mouth and just start, just join me, mm. like two eagles, just join. Okay, mm. just close your eyes, let the Spirit of God fill you, and then I'm just going to start singing in tongues. Ki yaramatsu yaranatsu, lamaramu non yarana, lamarotsu puriano, do you like that? Yeah, it's quite interesting. It even harmonizes. <laughs> So, thank you for your questions, but I'm now going to become the new believer because I want to learn about the prophetic. Because I want to know, how do you, like you step into tongues, you step into singing in tongues, how do you step into prophecy? Well, um, I think it's, again, it's that thing of faith of believing that God is going to put a sound in your mouth and has got a message for you. And of course we can pray for people and that is where we on earth bring our request into the presence of God. But as we're praying for the person then God can speak to you and say actually this is the message I want to speak. And it's interesting you should ask about a prophetic word because actually this I had this scripture as we were thinking about doing this that comes and it comes from Isaiah 58 verse 11 and it says and the Lord will guide you always. And he will satisfy your needs in the sun scorched land, and he will strengthen your frame, and you will be like a well watered garden and a spring whose waters never fail. So, you see, as I was praying for you, 
I felt God give me that scripture. So there are two ways you can go, like with prophecy. So I could say, Father, I just pray for Gordon. I just pray that where he's tired, you'll just strengthen him. Father, I just pray that where he feels a bit overwhelmed, that he'll know your strength. Or to prophesy is to then begin to speak the believing it's a revelation of God so that you become a spokesman of God so rather than me standing here praying to God I now stand with God and become his mouthpiece and speak so if I was going to prophesy this over you Gordon I would say Gordon I believe that the Lord will guide you always and Gordon there is a new level of satisfaction coming and God will satisfy every need you have God will satisfy your emotional needs your physical needs your health needs he will satisfy your well-being of your soul and he will change that which is a sun-scorched lamb which feels burnt and dry and make it well watered and he will strengthen your frame and father today i thank you that you are strengthening gordon that's mm. the prayer prophecy says yeah. and god today you will strengthen gordon's frame yes. and everything that feels that it's being broken i thank you for the power of the word of god to strengthen his frame and we declare that you will become a well-watered garden mm. and your life will be like a spring that never fails. Wonderful. And so you see, you take the scripture and you can either pray it. God, I pray that you will guide Gordon. God, I pray that you will satisfy Gordon. God, I pray that you will strengthen Gordon. Or to prophesy, I believe that is the word God wants to speak to Gordon. And so you mm. prophesy. I believe you can do this at the personal level but you can also do it for the national level and so you see in psalm 2 verse 8 it says ask of me mm. and i will give you the nations yeah. so i want to give you one now and i'm going to give you a prophetic scripture and in fact just to remind you on monday the 25th it's a national day of prayer i will be leading prayer with 35 other national leaders and you can find it on god channel and other things look at our website but you see, God, we can pray about our nation or we can speak to the nation. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is crafting us to speak. So I want to give you a scripture, which is Isaiah 60, verse 1. Mm. And I'm going to just read it yeah. and show how we can pray it. And then I want to give it to you and mm. I want you to practice prophesying it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he, we can just have a practice. Isaiah 60, verse 1. So this is what the scripture says. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Now you see if I'm going to pray yeah. it, I'll say, oh England, we want to pray for you. Father, we pray that England will rise up at this time. We pray that the United Kingdom, Scotland, Ireland, Wales and England, we just stand together. God, we pray that you would shine your light on our nation. God, we're really asking that the glory of God will come on England. So that's okay. the prayer. But now I want you to take that scripture okay. and prophesy so the Spirit of the Lord would say to you, England, arise, come on, arise, even though there's great darkness mm. that's all over you, even though there's great darkness on many peoples, the Lord is rising on you. His light is rising on you. He is rising and you have to step out and allow that light to shine from you. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord said to me from 2 Kings chapter 7 that we are just like lepers coming out of lockdown. As we come out, we want to prophesy what they saw because they saw that everything had changed. The whole landscape had changed. All the old opposition was gone. The people, they began to feast on something which they never believed they could even see. It was a time of new things, new landscape. So I just prophesy that, that we are stepping out of lockdown into a time of a completely changed spiritual landscape where the old opposition will no longer be there and we will begin to start seeing people hungry, desperate to know this living God. Amen. How's that? That was pretty good. You could pray for a while. So tomorrow is our Sunday morning and I am going to share, interestingly enough, on new normals. And mm. I just want, I feel God said to me, and he's got a word for you, discovering our new normal. And that we don't need to be terrified when we open the curtains and it all looks different. But God's got a plan for us. 
So come on, let's just pray it together one more time. Come on, England, we pray. Come on, arise and shine. Arise, shine. Come on, we're speaking a new, new day for you, England. It's a new day. Come on, England, rise up and shine. Let the light come upon you. Now, will you just pray for everyone as they go do their Saturday? So just receive right now the Spirit of God as he comes on you. As you start your day, Holy Spirit, will you come upon each person? Let them feel tangibly the Spirit of God is upon them. He is with them. He is with them. He is for them. He is for them. Let the blessing of God, the favour of God be on mm. every one of them. Let them know today is a good day. A day, today is a day of the Lord. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen. Enjoy.